You are not going to believe this unbelievable true story about how Bruce Lee stunned everyone on the set with his real kung fu skills. <laughs> this is an absolutely true story that you don't want to miss. What's up y'all? My name is Prince and this is Golden Bell Training where we separate the facts from the fiction when it comes to Bruce Lee. And every day I practice martial arts, <clears throat> you see? I've got a real treat for you Bruce Lee fans in this video because I've got a story that I'd never heard before about Bruce Lee answering a challenge on the set of a movie. Look y'all, this isn't even in John Little's book all about Bruce Lee's real fights and challenges. This fight it actually happened while Bruce Lee was out with his boo thing, Betty Ting Pei, while they were visiting his main man, Unicorn Chan, on the set of the movie, Fist of the Unicorn. And what happened next would completely change the way everyone on set viewed Bruce Lee forever. Before now, the most notable thing about this movie was the stolen clips of Bruce Lee spliced into it. But after this video, you guys are gonna see it in a whole new light. Now look y'all, I know you wanna get to the- <laughs> But first, let's dive into the background details so this story really makes sense. Bruce Lee and Unicorn Chin. These dudes go back like babies and pacifiers. Okay, well maybe not that far back, but they have a deep history meeting as child actors at a Hong Kong studio and forming a lifelong bond from their early films together. Now even though Bruce returned to the United States at 18 and rose to fame as Kato in The Green Hornet, and as a martial arts instructor to the stars while he was in America, he maintained a close relationship with Unicorn Chin. Unicorn Chin was part of Bruce Lee's inner circle. He had a prominent role in Way of the Dragon, and he would have had a role in Game of Death, but he didn't appear in Enter the Dragon due to studio issues. The truth is that if not for Unicorn Chin, look y'all, we wouldn't even be talking about Bruce Lee right now. Now if you recall my video about Bruce Lee's sparring match with Larry Lee, then you'll remember that Unicorn Chen played a crucial role in everything that happened with Bruce Lee's Hong Kong visit in 1970. Unicorn arranged Bruce's meeting with Run Run Shaw about possibly doing movies with Shaw's brother studios. Of course, we know that they lowballed him. Bruce wanted 10 grand for a movie, the amount that he needed to get himself out of debt back in Los Angeles, but Run Run Shaw only offered him a standard contract. Unicorn Chen helped facilitate Bruce's interviews on Enjoy Yourself Tonight and Golden Hour, two evening talk shows on the two leading television networks in Hong Kong back then. Those appearances included martial arts demonstrations that significantly boosted Bruce's profile, and they were what eventually caught the eye of Raymond Chow at Golden Harvest Studios. So Unicorn Chen played a pivotal role in Bruce Lee becoming the movie star that we know today. Now the reason Unicorn went so hard in the paint for Bruce was because he genuinely felt that Bruce's skills were amazing. Unicorn Chan was present when Bruce completely dismantled Larry Lee, a dude who ran a karate school in a triad infested territory. Unicorn constantly spoke highly of Bruce and like I said he really felt that Bruce was the best there was at what he did. Given Unicorn's significant contributions to Bruce's success, it was natural for Bruce to support his friend when he got the opportunity. Now allegedly, the studio producing Fist of the Unicorn would only agree to include Unicorn if Bruce Lee supported the project. Well, Bruce, being a team player, showed up for two days on the set as a show of support for his friend Unicorn, and in those two days, there are pictures of him giving Unicorn a haircut with Betty watching, he helped Unicorn out with some of the martial arts scenes, and Bruce may have assisted elsewhere with the fight choreography as well. Some of the other people working on this film as Kung Fu stuntmen had at least a working relationship with Bruce, as a few of them would go on to appear in Enter the Dragon. Like I said earlier, Unicorn Chan didn't appear in Enter the Dragon because of what the studio did on the days that Bruce Lee visited the set. As you know, or maybe you didn't know, Bruce was secretly being filmed. Shots of him working with Unicorn, working with some of the Kung Fu stuntmen on a fight scene, and shots of him with the crew made it into the final film. There may have been a lot of footage of him in the original cut of the movie, but Bruce Lee filed a lawsuit against the studio, leading to them cutting most of the footage of Bruce that they included. Now guys, wouldn't it be cool if someone managed to find that missing footage one day? Because what I'm about to tell y'all, can you imagine if they captured that on film? 
Well, anyway, it seemed like everyone was in a jovial mood during Bruce's visit, but there was one troublemaker on set, a Kung Fu stuntman who didn't appreciate Bruce's involvement. He considered Bruce a phony and he went on to openly challenge him. Now see, as it turns out, there was a Kung Fu stuntman working that day and he didn't like Bruce Lee helping out with the fight choreography. He didn't like that everyone was kissing up to Bruce. He didn't care about Bruce being Mr. Box Office and Mr. Jeet Kune Do. But what this stuntman didn't realize was that his actions would lead to one of the most unforgettable moments for everyone who worked on Fist of the Unicorn that day. Well, Philip Coe and Mars, two renowned Kung Fu stuntmen, were on set and witnessed this extraordinary event. They both recounted this incident in the Clones of Bruce documentary on Bruce exploitation, and Philip Coe also talked about it in some footage that didn't make the Death by Misadventure documentary. So these stories have been out there in the wild for decades, and I'm just now hearing them, and maybe so are some of you. But anyway, so according to these guys, this stuntman was showing off on the set and he just couldn't resist smarting off to Bruce Lee. Well, the guy apparently studied the Southern Shaolin style Hung Ga and he was showing off a tiger and crane form from that style. He was doing all of these acrobatics and all this stuff to catch the attention of the people on the set. And um, if you don't understand the term Kung Fu stuntman, look, these are the cream of the crop when it comes to stuntmen in Hong Kong movies. The actual name for them in Hong Kong was really something like Tiger Dragon Master or something. Look, guys like Sammo Hung, Jackie Chan, Mars, Yun Bu, Yun Hua, Bruce Lee stunt double, uh, Lam Ching Ying, these guys who would all go on to be big names in the Hong Kong Kung Fu movie industry, all of these guys at one point in their career had been Kung Fu stuntmen. These guys were expected to not only do stunts, but know how to fight to the point where if the director showed up to the set and told them to fight and start rolling the cameras, they had to do it with very little time to rehearse or anything. So this guy is showing off like maybe he was trying to make a name for himself to get up to the rank of becoming a Kung Fu stuntman, but I don't know who knows. Either way, he went about it completely the wrong way. So this guy, like I said before, he's showing off some hungar. He's doing a tiger and crane form and Bruce Lee walks by. So this dude really starts to lay it on thick, trying to show off in front of Bruce Lee. So he turns to Bruce and then he says, look, hey, Bruce, you seem really powerful on the movie screen, but can you fight for real? Well, Bruce kind of ignores him and he keeps on with whatever it was that he was doing. Well, all right, when this is all happening, Look, the cast and the crew, they had just broken for lunch. And with everyone on break, well, word spread quickly that this dude had just challenged Bruce Lee. The Hungar practitioner fueled by the crowd, we started to show off even more intensely. The Hungar guy's doing this tiger and crane form. He starts showing off some acrobatics. He's doing flips and all of this. It almost looks like a break dancing competition, the way he's trying to style on Bruce and win points from the crowd. But then he gets a little bit too full of himself and he made a huge mistake. Well, after putting on this fancy Kung Fu demonstration, he approached Bruce Lee directly. He lunged forward and little buddy took a shot at Bruce. Now this was the moment that everyone had been waiting for, but what happened next went beyond anyone's wildest expectations. And it proved that Bruce was every bit as good as people were saying. Bruce anticipated the strike and he easily ducked out of the way. And then with his lightning speed, Bruce slapped the guy right in the face. Bruce caught that guy completely off guard and it staggered him with the slap. And now, look, I don't know what religion that dude followed, but I think Bruce hit him hard enough that he turned his other cheek. So Bruce slapped him again to send a clear message that he wasn't impressed with this dude at all. Well, the hung guard guy, now with his mouth all bloody, he quickly lost all that bravado he had just a few seconds ago before Bruce slapped the taste out of his mouth. <laughs> and the fight was over before it even began. Now, according to Philip Cole, Bruce remained calm the entire time. He didn't do any of the flashy moves seen in his movies. He was simple, direct, and to the point to subdue his challenger. Well, Bruce Lee's encounter teaches us the power of calm confidence and practical technique over showmanship. It's a testament to his philosophy that martial arts should be both effective and efficient. 
For more incredible Bruce Lee stories about his real fights and challenges, check out what really happened when Bruce Lee fought a Goju Ryu karate master. And also this video on the real fight that Bruce Lee never wanted anyone to see. And when you hear these stories about the times Bruce Lee really faced a challenge, hey, just remember to use them as motivation to keep training, remember to breathe, and come back and holler at me on the next video.